Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Stock Photo Stocks on the Move for another week. Today's date the 2nd of March 2023, the year whizzes by. My name is Richard Lee and I manage the stockradio.com.au website for you. Well, it's been interesting reporting season. We've had some plenty of wax up, plenty of wax downs. It's been pretty dangerous out there. I think we've got more wax up than wax downs, which is good. That's how probabilities go. Um, but the markets, you know, it's been up near the highs. It's come resistance, it's some resistance up there. It's come down down in the last couple of weeks. So we'll have a look at that and see how it's looking at the moment and see what's driving it and what's not driving it at the moment. Okay, so firstly, um, I want to go and have a look at the top 10. Now, trend intensity ratings, we've got QBE right at the top and SDF, two of the big winners this week. Um, Super Retail Group keeps motoring along. Big come back a little bit. Seven Group's doing well. Uh, the Lottery Corporation, uh, VEA is doing well. Um, and we've also got a newcomer there. We've got, we've got WiseTech and newcomer AIA, BSL and EBA are also doing well. So they're all in the top 10 ratings at the moment and doing okay. And we can see Steadfast there. Uh, it's making new highs. Trend intensity rating of plus 10. And it's right up at the top of the ratings there, along with QBE. Okay. Um, so uh, that's the top 10. Don't forget to look at our trading center for all our stock picks, which we cover every week. Uh, we update the, the stops, the reversals, the exits, the entries, the, the stop levels, all that sort of thing. So it's all there for you to have a look at. Trading tactics, just a brief one this week. Uh, looking at the devil in the detail, what's it all about? I'll talk about that in trading tactics a bit later on. Okay, so let's get to the markets to start off with. Um, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's just had to ease off a little bit. We're starting to see a little bit of um, uh, an erosion of some support that we had recently. It's not slamming down at this stage, but we've got some selling here clearly evident at the moment, and we are at the highs. So a little bit of trouble. Um, you know, we're not busting through there at the moment. Uh, so we sort of might be looking for a little bit more, more downside on this possibly. If we can't get through here and we start to crumble through here, then this is probably a likely target for the Dow. In this, in this corrective page that it's going through. So more, more of the same may be. S&P, well, uh, it's got this level here. We've got a sort of one, two, three areas, four areas around this area here showing resistance. It's trying to break up, but again, we have this selling evident here, which is pretty clear. So we could still get a test of the highs at the moment. So this, this break up, this attempt to break up went well, but the sellers have hit the market and now we're in to see the buyers come back in and hold this up. Otherwise, this is going to drift back lower again. So that's really what we're looking at at the moment there. There's no real momentum in this at the moment. So we just have to sort of bide our time. Perhaps looking a little bit worse than it was last week. And NASDAQ a bit similar. It's had a little break up here, encouraging. It's come back. This one's not getting the selling that we, we see in the other markets there. Um, it's, it's come down a long way, a lot further. Um, it's trying to put a base in place at the moment. And it's, and it's looking okay. It's doing all the right things at the moment. So it will be up and down, as is always. But uh, the general trend is what we're looking for. And the downtrend seems to have stopped here around 10,000. And we're now trying a little bit of upside. So here's hoping we can get a bit of the, bit of that uh, taste of that over here. Okay, gold. Well, um, it's 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 succumbed to that sort of air, that resistance area up around the high here. Came back pretty quickly on some reasonable volume. Um, you know, my bet is this is going to drift back towards the low of the range at the moment. What else can we really look for? There's no sign of any strength at the moment, and the sellers are back in control, and this resistance is held. So for gold, pretty neutral at this stage. Copper, it's also turned a little bit. Even it's gone a little bit south this week, which is not so nice, but uh, it's had a rally this week, but it came back and tested support, which is okay, but we've got some fairly heavy selling through here. So again, we've got some heavy resistance to get through, which is certainly um, proving to be tough. And even though we just got near it at this stage, we've come back pretty quickly on some heavy selling. So Dr. Copper is not certain that a one may bet at the moment. It is holding a slight uptrend, so we'll just err on that side for the moment. And then there's Brent crude, which is the other way. It's in a downtrend, still holding the support of this one, but chipping away at it slowly. Not a lot of volume here. Momentum's pretty negative, so really all we can say is the trend is down. So at the moment, we did, that's what we look at for Brent. Um, lower prices uh, to come there. Okay, so that's the overseas markets for the moment. Uh, now we're going to look at our market, the ASX 200, which is, as I say, coming off. It's come off the last one, two, three. This is the fourth week down we've had. Um, so it's certainly shying away. We really almost did get to that resistance point, that the old high, unlike the Dow, it didn't quite get there. 
But, you know, we're looking here at this support here. This is a, a, a normal correction, a normal correction, what we've seen before. Um, but it starts. It needs to start turning shortly, okay? So this area here I've highlighted here, we've got a bit of horizontal resistance here, the moving average. This is the area I want to see hold. If it doesn't hold here, then the likelihood is we're going to go back to the bottom of this trading range, down around 6,500. 6, okay, so um, we need this, this trend needs to hold here at the moment. And, in, and today is not going to be a big day, I don't think so. Um, we've only got another day left, so we we'll have to we'll have to wait and see what's going to at the end of the week. It may not be that pretty at this stage. Having said that, we trade specific stocks, so that's where what where we're at. So I'm going to go through some specific stocks in a minute. First, I just want to go through our uh, stock pick update. So we're down one this week uh, at 59 stocks this week. We had um, three out and one and two in this week. Um, so two newbies and three exits. 56 stock picks of 160. We've lost a couple this week out of the universe. Pendle and I think Oz Minerals have been taken out. And then we've got two ETFs of 21 holding trends at the moment. So that's the stock pick update. It's not bad. 59 of uh, 56 stocks of 160. Okay, not too bad. Portfolio update. All marking time a little bit, coming back a little bit, uh, as, as the market does too. We're still holding in reasonable zones there at the moment there. We can see they're all still full, all those stocks, except for the Conservative, which is 7 out of 20. That's never full. Um, but all the other Energizer stocks are still all full. Um, we've got a couple of stocks in there that are marking time. Challenger, IAG, which has been a bit of a struggle, but we've got some good ones in there as well. Um, Treasury, Wine, Strange, Blue Scope, for all a couple of others um, in there. So that portfolio update is what we're looking at at the moment. Now we're going to go and have a look at some, some ASX stocks. Um, Starting off with a couple of leaders. Now, last week I went through, uh, I looked at CSL, which has quite, quite come back from that uh, resistance point. We had that little break up that we saw there. It rallied, but it's just come back pretty quickly again. Resistance seems to be uh, holding at the moment, unless stocks have gone through them. So for CSL, it's struggling a bit. Um, not a lot from last week, I don't think. SPW, TLC continuing high. JXX is struggling. Sims Group testing its uh, resistance there. It hasn't got through it at this stage. So this week I want to look at a couple more stocks. Um, first, I want to look at uh, a couple of leaders in ANZ, which we've all seen. Uh, we've seen the banks that really haven't gone far, and I guess it's a bit of the trouble with the index at the moment, is that the um, the banks are weighing, BHP is going nowhere at this stage, Rio is going nowhere, Telstra is slightly up. You know, most of these leaders have been marking time. And that's putting a bit of a lid on the index, unfortunately. But as I said before, there's always stocks that we look that don't get affected by the index or don't affect the index the other way around. Um, however, ANZ is one of the big ones here. And it is, you know, you can see we had a beautiful trend up here in 2020. And it rose up to here to this point here, which was, which is a big resistance up around $29, $30. Um, the stock succumbed here. It tried, it tried, it tried, it failed, it came back. And it's formed quite a promising sort of uh, trend reversal structure pattern here, which looks okay, but we've still got all this resistance up here. So this is encouraging. I'm not seeing a lot here, I'm not seeing a lot here. Um, but really, is there is a lot of trouble ahead. So my my trigger point for ANZ still lies up around the highs at this stage. Trend intensity, trend intensity rating is minus three. So that's neutral. So plenty of work to do there. Yep, they don't look fantastic, the banks, but that's ANZ. That's how it looks. It's trying to rise. Um, this is, a, I guess, a bullish sign that this, uh, these lows through here, but we need to get through there and then challenge this whole area up to here between 26 and 30 to really pave the way for some higher prices. Okay, so that's ANZ Bank. Now, the mystery to everybody, I was looking to Cola last night and a couple of other stock reports, and um, or Switzer, I think it was. Um, and, you know, Santos has got everybody uh, pulling their hair out because this stock has gone nowhere for a long time. We've got gas prices going through the roof, oil prices going through the roof. Well, not through the roof now, but they were strong. Uh, and this stock hasn't really done anything at all. So from what was a potentially good uptrend moving into this resistance area up here, um, has now seen to found a bit of quite a bit of selling as the volumes rise a lot more red bars here and this stock price starts to go down now here we've got a, a point here of support uh, which has come back to a lower high which is a worry it's come back to here and it's starting to crumble a little bit um, it hasn't broken down yet but this area here if it does break that's the average there's, a, there's the uptrend line a bit of horizontal support there's some fairly strong evidence to say that this area starts to break then we may well see lower prices strange as it may seem that's the Santos message I'm getting the trend intensity is minus 8 and it has struggled for a long time 
Having said that, if it does eventually get through this $9 level up here, then that's what I'd like to see. And I had this put in a long time ago when it was up around here, and we've never got the signal for it, and it's just crumbled down. So Santos remains a mystery, but it's like a lot of stocks, with the sticker data, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, a lot of these stocks, why are they going down? Well, um, it's a bit of a mystery. But that's what happens. It's what the stock market does. Um, so for Santos, we just look at the price. The price never lies. And that's what tells us to uh, tells us how, how we should behave. And at the moment, it's uh, not looking at that flash, that flash. So that is Santos at the moment. Again, it's uh, you know an interesting stock. Okay, let's go to Dicker Data. Now you all know I've had an interest in this stock. I like this stock. It's got it's grown enormously over the last few years. But for some strange reason, it has come down from um, sixteen dollars down to nearly eight. So it's had a fifty percent correction. For a good stock, well, it's an interesting stock. I actually was listening to um, David Dicker on the Switzer Report last uh, yesterday, and uh, he was actually saying that um, he thought um, where was it here. The share price is not correlated to the company's performance because he knows what the company's performance is and he knows what the share price is. So this is always a mystery that we try and, try and unravel as to why stock prices go one way and, and the company performance goes the other way. In, re in reality, um, ticket data has gone from $0.80 cents to $8 in nine years, which is just over 900%, which is nobody's to be sneezed at. And even that's at $8, not at $17, which it was not long ago. So uh, it's an interesting story. Um, what, well, what, what, what is the price correlated to? What, that, that's the big question. We can only uh, make an educated guess by tracking the behavior of the share price because that's more likely to give us a better direction than the company performance because company performance is what it is. Uh, share prices are traded by investors who try and perceive things are going to be happening in the future as to what's happening next. And this isn't a good picture here. You know, there's part of the reason here also maybe that Dicker Data has been moved into the ASX 200. So it's not such an individually um, movable stock. It's more institutionally affected because they're all going to have holdings in it. And also the tech index. It went into the tech index and all of a sudden became a tech stock like D Data 3 and things like that, which they're not really. They just sell hardware. That's what they do. And um, but it is lumped in, so that just makes it a little bit harder. So all of a sudden, this performance of the share price has become a little bit down. Having said that, I'm not saying this is a buy. I'm saying that this trend is down. Clearly, I have got nothing on this chart apart from a couple of lines, but we can see here the three, the lower highs and lower lows are still occurring. And this last shot down is a huge volume. Now, having huge volume is good because it does mean that there's buys, but there's obviously still more sellers than buys. That's why the price is going down and momentum is also very weak. So we let this behavior occur because there will be an opportunity at some stage to get into one of these stocks, but we need to see some evidence of support and some buying and a turn in the price for us before we would look at it. So Dicker Data, a very, very interesting stock, pays its dividends out of its profits. So the dividends have been cut quite a bit because profits were cut. But this is just par for the course for a business in this situation when interest rates start rising and, um, and uh, supply chains get, um, get hit a bit hard. It causes the cost to go up and uh, the gap between profits and costs gets, gets lower. And that's what's happened. And Dick, David Dick is purely straight with exactly what he says, but he says it's a good business and it will turn around. Probably a pretty good buy at this stage. So it's an interesting stock ticket data, but it is going down and these things happen for whatever reason. Don't try and explain them. They just do this sort of thing sometimes. So, um, so, so the share price can give us a better idea of the performance. This is over the short term uh, as swage and sentiment can, can directly affect the share price. But over the really long term, as I said before, it's a growing stock. It's gone from 80 cents to $8 in 10 years. It's performed pretty well and it's probably got a bright, bright, bright future. So um, that's ticket data. I just thought I'd talk to you a little bit about the share price because we have seen um, some uh, other, some big wax in the reporting season, which I might get into a couple of stocks in a minute about that. But uh, ticket data has come off and uh, we just let that go um, play, play out as it will. Okay, so that is ticket data. Um, SDF, or I could look at QBE here, they've made, they're fairly similar. Um, they've been uh, going sideways for a while, just starting to break up again. We've got some really good volumes down here coming through on SDF. We've also got very strong momentum. The trend intensity rating is 10. This is a no-brainer, this one. You just buy this one and hold it with a stop. So we've done that, and that's where we are steadfast, and it looks, um, it looks great. Um, as I said before, some of the health stocks are very frustrating. We've seen CSL come back, Cochlear is trying, Sonic Health has been hitting some lows. It just had a huge rally. Whether that lasts, I don't know. But a lot of those stocks are still struggling. The day will come, but uh, the health stocks have been quite frustrating 
for a while, especially those big leaders who've really done nothing at all. Another stock I want to have a look at, which I find interesting, which has been Metcash. Um, you know, it slides in between the two coals or more worse. Uh, and in the end, really, it's actually not done a bad performance. I did a little table in the newsletter, this, which came out yesterday, for those of you who haven't seen it. Um, since, to, since 2020, Metcash has been up 77%. Its yield is 5.46. Coles has been up 27%. Its yield is 3.48. And Woolworths has been up 8%. Yield is 2.48. So you decide who the winner in this battle is at the moment. But my bet is Metcash has done very well and will continue to do well. And at the moment, we're having a correction. So let's have a look at the chart. We had the beautiful trend up through 2020 through 2021. It then came back. Uh, with the market hasn't corrected that badly really it's found very good support back here it's an old resistance level which now provides support three times we banged on this door and now we try the upside once twice and we're in the middle of the range at the moment so this is really the bit an interesting range this one volumes aren't telling us a normal slot this is going flat to neutral as we know prices go sideways the longer they go sideways that momentum index will remain right on neutral no upside momentum no downside momentum so um, so we just really have to look and wait and watch. I don't know what the resolution is going to be out of this. Um, I'm always hopeful of the upside because that's what, where we make our money. And this is the current challenge. But again, we've, we've still got this high to get through yet. So there's still a wall to get through here. There's only one little wall there. So usually if there's only one, I'm quite happy to take a resistance area down here. If there's more than one, two or three or four, then I'm unlikely to take it until this breaks off. So I'm still watching R1. This is the current challenge. Sellers are still there. You can see there's a little bit of a couple of red bars there. And that flat trend intensity rating is minus three. So I'm just waiting in the wings for Metcash. I still think it's got a nice little niche in between Coles and Woolworths. It's just going through a corrective phase with the market. And we'll just, if it does break up, then we'll run with it. But it's an interesting stock and yields very well. Okay, uh, the builders have been interesting as well because they've sort of, you know, started to levitate a little bit. Brickworks, Spiral, even CSR's had a bit of a kick. Unfortunately, um, the overseas ones, or the overseas operated ones, are of JHX, of James Hardy and Fletcher Building, have not done so well. Um, so we're just really focusing on the ones that are doing well at the moment, and that is Brickworks, which is just here. Um, it's done very well. It's had a little break up here down at $22. It's now around $24.60. Uh, and moving higher. Uh, volumes have been very light. Go figure. I have no idea. My my weight of evidence gives me a trend intensity rating of plus eight. So I'm not going to base too much on that. But this is going up and above the average and momentum is strong. So I hold with this position that we took back here um, in October last year. Okay, so Brickworks is looking good. And so the builders are they're, they're trying to make their way higher. Still there's a bit of interest coming in there. Um, so we just follow the ones that are going up for the moment. Okay, busy day today with lots of stocks to get through. Um, possible ones you can look at at the moment. Now, we had a little bit of a spike up in a couple of the uh, the REITs uh, before um, uh, in Mervac and I think Goodman and maybe GBT. They spiked up, they've come back a little bit. Other ones that haven't gone yet that look quite interesting is Abacus, Abacus Property. We've been looking at this for a while. The trend intensity rating is zero. We've got some nice volume appearing here and it's starting to climb back towards zero. We're starting to move above the average and hold it. We've obviously got a little battle going on here at the moment uh, between about uh, 290 and uh, 280. Um, but what it looks like, you know, the, the, the bias is now starting to move up. We've got a low, high low here. This may well break up and give us a shot at R1. So Abbas Group's not looking too bad. Uh, so certainly worth watching that one. And Centre Group's the other one, which, I mean, as I said, things all look, everything, all charts look different. And, but they all give you a similar sort of message in the end of what we're trying to look for, and that's to find a trend. And in this situation here, we've got Centre Group having gone sideways since December 2020. So a good couple of years there. Um, but it's now starting to climb here back towards this high of this trading range and we're getting some nice volume starting to push through here and momentum starting to kick above zero. So we did have an attempt before and it got through this resistance level, how it, however it failed and came back again. So now we're going to have another shot at this level here, or well, looks like we are. Um, it's up around 320, something like that. Trend intensity rating is plus one, but it's building. We don't do anything until it breaks. If it breaks, then we do it. But for the moment, uh, we're just waiting and watching this one and keeping an eye on it and watching the evidence build so that when it does come, we do get that trigger point and we're feeling confident about taking this stock on. So that is Centre Group. Uh, there's a couple of property stocks for you to have a little look at. Um, you could also look at vicinity centres, which is also looking interesting up near the highs at the moment. We have a recent entry in Auckland International Airport. Um, now, it's 
it's actually had a pretty sharp rise this year or since last September. It's come all the way up here, back to the top of the trading range, and hasn't faltered one little bit, apart from a slight little blip there. So this didn't look look like it was certainly under threat, this area here, and it certainly looks like it is at the moment as we start to push through it. 10 intensity rating is plus 9. The volume here you can't see because of that big spike up, but if I push this up, you can see some very, very healthy volume pushing this rally very hard. So tourist market might be back. Looks like it could be. Momentum's good. Volume's good. It's above the average. It's now starting to break through our trend reversal level and setting R2 up around 950 as a potential target. Um, or just, just for a trending move here, as always, we follow with a stop loss. But uh, Auckland International Airport starting to look pretty good. Rating trend intensity rating of plus 9. Okay, the other one I want to talk about is, well, Qantas. In, and I know I've talked about Qantas for a while, I just find it an incredibly resilient stock and it always amazes me because, you know, we have these sentiment things about how we feel about things and not a lot of people too, feel too warm and fuzzy about Qantas or Jetstar for that matter, but still the stock rises. So uh, so like, you know, I think A2M had a good profit bought, pro, share price got slammed, TWE, even Qantas, um, you know, got slammed last week, but it's back. You know, you've got to be careful about focusing on these one-day ones, these knee-jerk reactions, these emotional decisions days. They're not good days to make decisions on. And invariably, if the stock is good, it will come back. And Qantas certainly came back straight away, got down to 6 bucks. It's now back up at 6.44. And when we look through this here, we've got nothing really here. We're above the average. Volume is pretty strong, still reasonably strong here. A good spike on the sell-off yesterday, but it's been bought back, so that's good. Momentum is still is strong, but flat, which means steady uptrend still. So it doesn't mean turn or anything like that. So at the moment, and this recovery is a very good recovery, trend intensity rating is still plus eight. This may well go through up towards this uh, $7, 750 area uh, for us. So still looks for a good Qantas. Um, it's just one of those things people just don't typically... Um, I get, they get concerned about certain things. Um, what else have we got here? T&E is still going ahead. QBE is still going ahead. Seven Group, Super Retail Group, and uh, Chalice Mining. They're all really up the top, at top of those ratings at the moment and doing really well. So there's some of our very, very good trends. And here's a little picture of Champion Iron, uh, which, you know, we, we get pretty volatile with some of these, these metal stocks, and sometimes we don't do too well. But this one is holding up remarkably well considering because uh, often after you get a rise like this, they come back pretty quickly, which is what happened here. So we were very wary of that. Um, but we were also very aware of the potential for a new high and another spike higher. So we're still hanging on here. It's, our stop's just around here somewhere. Uh, we've got some selling. It's hit the market, but the price is holding up okay. Momentum's positive, and we're above the average. So trend intensity is still rating at plus eight. So we're hanging in there with Champion on and hoping we are going to get one of those uh, one of those good rewards uh, for trading some of these stocks, which can be very, very volatile and very risky. So also we would look at, um, well, there's mineral resources or Blue Scope Steel, another one which had a bit of a blip down and blip straight back up again. Good sign of support for this stock. Um, you know, up, down, up again. Uh, the sellers hit the market, didn't really do too much to the price, and the market's back up again. So it's trend intensity rating of 9, it's looking pretty good. It came down 41% from high to low. The momentum's positive. You know, it looks pretty good. You know, this downtrend's broken, we've got a good accumulation, we're now starting to trend up as it looks there. So that's really what you want to see. Have faith in your uh, in your analysis, have faith in your trade plan, and follow it and do what you're told. So this is Blue Scope Steel, which is looking pretty good. And another one, Mineral Resources, which again, the resilience, it's pretty amazing. We've had a few good sell-offs here. We've got a couple of long candles here at the moment, which is showing this a good support around this sort of $78 level. But it's holding up. Trend intensity rating is still eight. Um, a nice new high setup here, and it's still going on. We've got some selling it has come and hit the market. Momentum is sagging. Okay, so we're watching these support levels. We're watching our stop at the moment, being very wary of these stocks, but they have gone up, and they may well continue to go up. So we're going to hang in there with those stocks. Okay, so that's mineral water, uh, sorry, mineral water, mineral resources, and blue scope still. So they're most of the stocks I've got for you today. Um, I did talk to you a little bit about A2 Milk, uh, which we saw last week. And it is, it is also I mean, one of those stocks that has had a, uh, took, took a knock. Let's so get this so you can see this stock. It's taken a knock, okay. It came back. The profit report was good. It, the outlook is fine. There's a little bit of a blip occurring there, but it got sold off for whatever reason, and now it's coming back 
uh, above the stop at the moment. You can see the stop here, which I don't usually show you, but here's, here's the stop here this at the moment. It's around 6.40, 6.45. Uh, so we're watching that very carefully. Trend intensity rating plus six. It came back a little bit, but really good support since that report, since that quick sell-off. So uh, once things settle down, things come back, and everybody looks at life again realistically, then often these stocks do come back. So AT Milk is looking a boom, and I'm really looking forward to seeing a good challenge at this $7.20 level on this stock here. Um, if as long as it holds here, then it's every chance it's going to do that, especially after a selling wave like that. And if the buyers hold it, that's a real sign of confidence for the stock. Okay, so that's AT Milk. Okay, the only one I've got through now is, uh, this is uh, Data 3, which I looked at in the newsletter a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's an interesting stock that, uh, a bit like Dicker Data, it's sort of been lumped into the tech index area a bit, but it's really just a hardware company and doesn't really do uh, too much sort of techie stuff. However, um, we've now got this big trading range that's been in probably for a couple of years, since the end of 2020, 20, 21, 22, so two and a half years there. Um, got a nice trading range here. We've got a little resistance point here, which is sort of, uh, it kicked above here. I still waited for this area to go. Um, however, this is like a point of control here where, where stocks resist and then find support. And it's a very important level that we keep an eye on, that one that does, does both, um, does both, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Qualities, resistance, support. Okay, um, so it's come off the low of the range. It's raised strongly up to the high. It's clicked through here pretty clearly. Now starting to move higher again. It's a smaller stock. Volumes are difficult to read sometimes, but it is a bit better at the moment. I'll sort of squeeze it up a little bit so you can see. Momentum's very strong. It's above the average. Ultimately, with a stock like this, if it makes a new high, that's a good thing. This is all superfluous to me. It's the price action I really base my thinking on or my decision making on. Uh, it's nice to have the conf confirmation, but the new high uh, is a good one for me. So that's data three, one for you to watch. Um, going totally different direction to Dicker Data, but there, there you go. That's the stock market for you. Okay, now there are plenty of good stocks out there. You just have to find them. A swag of other opportunities are coming up in the stock radar scans right now. With the stocks moving into the grey zone. So um, an interesting time in the stock market. Okay, so that's really the most of the stocks I've got for you today. Plenty of stuff for you to have a look at there today. Uh, my trading tactics this week, really I just want to talk about a little bit about the devil in the detail. It's, it's no biggie, but it's something to be aware of. Um, it's, it's the, you know, I'm always a perspective person, I'm always a stand back, stand back type of person. It's the overall trend we're interested in, not the detail. So you know, getting too close to a stock and too close to a chart is not such a good thing. Stepping back and looking at the overall highs and lows and what they're doing is the main point. It's the stuff in the middle there, it doesn't really matter so much. Okay, whichever time frame you're looking at, it doesn't matter if it's daily, weekly, hourly, or whatever it is, don't look too closely. The period to period, hour to hour, day to day, week to week, price action varies markedly for every single stock, but the overall trends don't. Your key low points and your key high points, they develop your higher, higher lows, your lower highs, your lower lows, your trends, your no trends. And to try and read everything into every little period movement is not going to help you at all. Um, so what we're just looking at is those trends. So the real detail, don't get too close to the market because it will not help you. Because one day you'll think one thing, the next day you'll think another. It's the overall trend. They go up or they go down. That's what markets do. So you can have a series of trends, but the intricate detail follows a random path of ups and downs. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a couple of examples today. This, I'm just going to go across the StockRadar website, and this is this is my StockRadar portfolio at the moment. You can see the top tens here. So what I wanted to show you here is QBE and and, um, and Steadfast have actually got fairly similar charts. Um, now you can see here we've got a consolidation pattern. We now get some lower, some high lows, and we get a rally through here. The, all this interesting in in detail information is all different for every stock. Having said that, SDF is reasonably similar. It's behaved reasonably similar. It's obviously got reasonably similar driving forces. So it's quite a similar sort of pattern. This stuff will be a little bit different, but not a lot because of similar stocks. However, if we go see to a stock like Super Retail Group, it broke up here, nothing like QBE or, or Steadfast. However, it is going up in a trend of the higher highs and higher lows. So the, every little bit of here will be different. So trying to make this compare this to, to QBE or Steadfast is not the way to do it. Step back, don't look at every detail. SVW, another another stock, 7 Group, which pretty well gone straight up. Hardly had one, two weeks down, or three maybe, since October. Quite a, quite amazing, okay? So that's, that's an amazing thing. Then we go through to um, 
V A. The cat trying to get in the door. V A. And uh, it's it's also had a break up out of a trading range. Again, this detail here is similar, but you get the highs and lows, highs and lows that give you your trends. Okay. Uh, Wise Tech, another stock. It's totally different. Going sideways here, we have a trading range. This is the high points, the low points. These are the things that I focus on. These lows here, it breaks up. I set a stop loss. So again, it's a very different trading action. Auckland International, another one, which has just broken out of a trading range. Again, all this information in here is all very different. It's these lows and these highs. That's why I focus on these points because they're the key points. These aren't the key points. They don't matter so much. Okay, so step back, have a good look at your markets. And it will help you uh, help you see what is really there, rather than what you think is there. So um, keep with the big picture. Don't overanalyze and stay sane because uh, looking too close to market can drive can drive you nuts. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, that's about all I've got for you today. There's plenty of stocks there. Plenty of interest in the market. I know the index itself is stalled for the moment, but there's good stocks out there. Um, the ASX 200 is a big resistance at the moment, and with many leading stocks that drive it struggling, like BHP, CBA, CSL, the ASX 200 may find it hard to move higher. But there is a swathe of opportunities across the 160 stocks that we cover. So feel free to take a trial, see how it works, ask me some questions, and hopefully you'll enjoy the experience. Everybody's welcome at Stock Radio, okay, to have a look, have a chat to me, whatever it is. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed today. I'm looking forward to what the market's going to throw at me for the next week. Uh, so stay safe. Watch your trends. Heed your stops. Give me a call if you need a chat. Um, and I'll see you all again next week with more insights for you. Okay. See you later.